Man, I don't know. Reincarnated. I was stargazing. Life goes on. I need all my babies. Yeah, yeah. Woke up, looking for the broccoli. I keep, keep a horn on me, that come my seat. I peep on the shit, the blueprint is by me. Mr. Get Off, I get off at my feet. Woke up, looking for the broccoli. I keep, keep a horn on me, that come my seat. I peep on the shit, the blueprint is by me. Mr. Get Off, I get off at my feet. Woke up, looking for the broccoli. I keep, keep a horn on me, that come my seat. Yo, guys, this is Down the Field Podcast, and we're here today with John Bolton. So, he was a former Arkansas Razorback shortstop. So say hi, John. What's up, everybody? How we doing? So we have about 12 questions that we wanted to ask you. So, Hayden, you go ahead and start us off. All right. All right, here we go. Um, my first question is, what made you want to come to Arkansas? Like, what was the main reason why? Uh, it's a good question. Um, you know, when I was in the portal, I uh, basically came down between – a handful of schools, uh, but what really stuck out about Arkansas was, I mean, it was really the history. Uh, so, I mean, growing up, I always knew, I wasn't necessarily, I mean, I'm not from Arkansas, I was never necessarily a fan, um, but I always knew who Dave Van Horn was, I always knew Arkansas Razorback baseball program has always been top five program every year. So, it's, it's one of those programs where when you hear Arkansas Razorback baseball, you're like, oh, yeah, they're obviously really good. Um, so, when they reached out and offered i mean i go up and look up the facilities on youtube and i see the new facilities i'm like man i was a i was like much better than that and you know having a chance to play for dave van horn and play for that program and all that is something i really couldn't turn down that's a good answer um so <laughs> normally we have a third person and he always asks the same question and i want to go ahead and get it out of the way because So the way we pick our questions is we do a draft, and this was the very last pick, and I ended up with it. So (laughs) it's midnight, and you have to go eat somewhere. Where are you going to go eat? In general or in Fayetteville? Just anywhere, if you're wherever you're at. Oh, man. I'm going to expose myself. Uh, Midnight. I mean, I'm definitely going fast food. Waffle House crossed my mind, but I'm not going to Waffle House. <laughs> I'll go McDonald's. I don't do it often. I don't do it often. But if I if it's midnight and I'm hungry, I'll go to McDonald's. <laughs> uh, let's keep you on the food related stuff. Um, did you ever have like a mid season diet or anything like that during your Arkansas career? Uh, yeah. I mean, basically. The carb heavy diet. Uh, I just mean naturally, you're playing three games a weekend. You're playing one, maybe two midweek games. You're practicing a lot, lifting weights a lot. Uh, carbs are a big, big deal. Uh, a lot of protein, a lot of water, a ton of water, a ton of electrolytes. Um, and we had a dietitian for the baseball team, and she did a great job, and she made sure all of us stayed on track. Um, so that's that's. Uh, I would say that's mainly it. I mean, of course. You know, post uh, post sweep on Sunday, you know, we're going to go get canes or we're going to get a pizza, celebrate a little bit. But, you know, during the week, it's uh, it, we try to we try to stay on top of it. All right. So the next question is, so whenever you you had your walk up song, whenever you played for the Razorbacks and Austin Pay, why? Like, what was your walk up song for the people who don't know? And why was it your walk up song? Or why was it? Yeah, I had. I had Russian Cream by Key Glock. Um, just being from, I'm from Memphis, and he's a Memphis rapper. And uh, so growing up, you know, naturally he's from Memphis, so I listened to his music, and that was one song I just always liked. Um, and it's the beginning of the song. The first time I heard it, I was like, man, that'd be a really good walk-up song. So really, you're not a baseball guy unless you hear a good song. You're like, ah, oh, that'd be a good walk-up song. So the first time I heard it, I was like, I mean, that was my walk-up song for what, three years, something like that? I don't know. It was just kind of, I feel like it was a crowd favorite, too. Um, and it got, it got me in the right zone. Um, so I, I just like the beat and everything about it. Um, my next question is, so obviously you're pretty known, uh, during your Arkansas career, you were pretty known in Fayetteville, but is there really anyone you've met that's like really famous outside of Arkansas? Mm, just in general, 
general? Yeah. Uh, sorry about this past year since I've been gone, or all together? Just all together. Let's see. I uh, I didn't get to meet him, but Darren McFadden came to one of our games. It was a big game, like maybe South Carolina at home. And DMAC was up there sitting in the press box. Not that that was not the press box, but one of the suites. I thought that was the coolest thing ever just because I grew up, you know, watching them. And again, I wasn't an Arkansas fan growing up. So, and even for me to say that, like, that was DMAC. And so that's an unbiased opinion. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, but guys, I met. Um, I met Phil Nicholson. That was cool. Archie Manning, if y'all are old enough to know who that is. Please tell me y'all know who that is. <laughs> yeah, those were those were hesitant yeses. You can be honest, it's okay. Hey, I, I know who it is, and I know he knows who it is. I know. Okay, good, good. There's old players, so I just got to make sure. Oh, yeah. we That's another thing we keep up with is NFL heavy. Um, mm-hmm. So kind of speaking about pro sports, what is your, uh, what's your favorite MLB, MLB team? I don't have one. Uh, my dad grew up a Cardinals fan. Uh, but I mean, I was never really into the MLB like that. I like following players. So I've got three players that I've always liked and I've always watched. And it's Dansby Swanson, Francisco Lindor, and Trey Turner. Naturally, all short stops. Uh, I just like the way they play. Our honorable mention is Bobby Witt. Uh, uh, keeping on the MLB thing, um, if you had to pick which MLB team you would start on, like if you got to pick, who would you pick? Oh man, I'll go. Uh, mm, I'll go Phillies because I like the uniforms and their their fans are crazy. <laughs> they got the best uniforms in the MLB. Their fans are definitely nuts. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So growing up. Did you have, like, an idol that you looked at, like, a famous idol, not, like, a family member, like, an idol that, like, is, was obviously higher of, than you at the time? Like, I don't know, maybe Barry Bonds, you know, somebody like that. Uh, Baseball-wise, Dance B. Swanson. Um, but there was a particular athlete that didn't play baseball. He's an NBA player, and he's still playing. And not that I'm necessarily a basketball guy, but I just love this dude's hustle and his attitude and all that it's russell westbrook people people like to hate on people like people like to hate on russell westbrook he's the goat i i I, I love everything about russell westbrook how he plays his mentality everything yes sir that's that's my dude that's my dude he's my favorite player yeah (laughs) good good i've met met two good guys right here (laughs) um my next question is um so during your Arkansas career, was there any particular favorite moment in your career? Because mine was uh, against Tennessee uh, when I think Stovall popped it up like to the pitcher and like nobody was like guarding third base and you just like sprinted toward like just go just sprinted towards third and like nobody was even in the area and yeah. like all, and then like like the camera just shows Taven Josenberg just doing this. To, to, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, he was I was pointing out that for like. He was pointing out for like five seconds. I never saw him, and then Coach Thompson hit me on the hit me on the back. He's like, "Hey, man, look at your guy." <laughs> uh, but no, that was kind of gutsy when I saw it go up in the air, and I saw the third baseman just kind of floating away from the bag, like he didn't know what he was doing. I was like, "I guess I'm just gonna back up." <laughs> um, but a personal favorite moment for me, um, I got two. So very first game in Arlington uh, against Texas. Um, again, it was my, you know, debut as a Razorback. I didn't really know what to expect crowd wise because we're not playing at home and we step on the field for warmups. I didn't even have my cleats on yet. And as soon as we step on the field, I hear like this huge roar and they start the hog call and I turn around. There's already at least 15,000 people there and hour and an hour before the game. And I got chills immediately. I still get chills just thinking about it. And Kendall Diggs. I was just sitting right by him. He looked at me. And he was like, "Yeah, man, welcome to it." And so I'll never, I'll never forget that moment. Um, and that was a fun game, great game, winning three to two against a rival. Um, another moment 
was uh, it doesn't really seem big on paper, but it was big to me. Uh, we played Texas A and M in the SEC tournament, and I think it was like on first and second late in the game. I think it was top top or bottom of ninth, and I had a double down the right field line, and it scored two, kept us in the game, whatever. But I was hurt that whole week because we played Vanderbilt the week before, and I sprained my ankle, and I was out for the last Vanderbilt game and like the first two or three tournament games. But the SC tournament is always something I watched growing up. Thought it was so cool, and I was I'd always thought like how cool would it be to play in the SC tournament? And of course, I get hurt right before it, so I was pretty bummed. But ended up getting good enough to where I wasn't 100. percent even though I told Coach Van Horn I was, uh, that I was good enough to play. And so it was, it was exciting playing that game and to get that hit. It was just, it was something I'll never forget. You know what's funny? Like, you're the first person that said that you liked the SEC tournament. <laughs> Most people that I know hate it. Like, they're yeah, like, oh. no, I, I love it. I mean, it's all perspective. It's all perspective, man. I mean, if you're playing at Arkansas, it's your third or fourth year and you've done it before and all that. Like, I get it. But, I mean, I had one year there, and, you know, I started off my career at a JUCO, and then Austin P. like, you don't get you don't get that kind of, you know, notoriety. You don't get those fans. So, for me to play there my last year and grow up, you know, playing or watching those coaches and those teams and seeing the SC tournament, it was just special to me. It's all it's all perspective, in my, in my opinion. So, Mike, what my next question is, what was it like playing under or for DVH? Because – you know, a lot of people call him, the, you, know, le, you know, he's a legend. He, I mean, he is a legend. I got a shirt in my closet that says DVH for Prez. But I'm just like, what was it like actually playing for him? Because there's ideas, you know, I, I want to play for him, I want to play for him. But what was it like actually doing it? Man, it was great. Uh, it's kind of, it wasn't really what I expected. Um, in the sense of he's very, he's more laid back than you think. Um there were multiple times where he could have ripped me a new one in the dugout, gotten on me just for doing something. And, uh, you know, he'd either not say anything because he, he knows not to get on me because I, 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 I know the mistake I made. Or he would come up and just, you know, calmly talk about it, whatever. And one thing that I think makes him really good at what he does is he knew how I ticked and he knows how his players tick. Some guys need to be yelled at. Right, if you need him to lock back in, they need to be yelled at. I wasn't one of those guys. I fed off confidence, and I think he knew that. And so he would always come up to me and build me up. Uh, just you know, if, if I had a little bit of a stint where I was struggling a little bit, and uh, I was like, man, I could be pulled out of the lineup any game now. And he came up to me one practice, or maybe it was before a game, and he was like, hey, just you know, you're our guy. You know, go out there and do your thing. We're behind you, and that meant the world to me. And so just little stuff like that that probably he don't even realize or other people don't really realize, but it meant a lot to me. And again, like you said, he's a legend. And uh, I remember when I first got on campus and I met him for the first time, I was like, that is Dave Van Horn. And I'm actually playing for him. I don't know, it was just, it was pretty cool. But. Uh, my next question is, I know you like mentioned like hog fans being wild and stuff, but what's it like, like compare wise, What's it like playing in front of a Bomb Walker Stadium crowd where, like, sold-out crowd, like, uh, people calling the Hogs every single inning, and then compare it to, like, another SEC, like, team crowd that's not as, like, passionate for baseball? So, like, what's the difference, like? Not as superior. I mean, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, players feed off of that. And whether fans realize it or not, I mean, just compare a weekend series against Tennessee versus a midweek game, even at Bomb. When there's not as many fans, fans aren't into it, the players aren't going to be as into it. Of course, we're going to be into it. We want to win. But when you've got the, the hog fans behind you and calling the hogs and they're loud, it amps us up 100%. So it definitely plays a factor. Um, but that's what makes Bob special because I don't think there's another place like it. I mean, LSU's close. LSU's fans are rowdy and they're loud. Those are great fans. Um, Mississippi State, when they're good. But when we played them, they didn't have anything to cheer about. So they were quiet the whole time. Didn't hear any cowbells, thank goodness. Uh, Ole Miss, when they're good, they've got some good fans. But other than that, man, it's – I could be biased, but Bomb is number one in my opinion. I hate the stupid cowbells. <laughs> the, cowboys, the cowboys are terrible. Man. I, I hate the cowbells. Get those out of here. 
Yeah. Um, so, I have two more questions, but I kind of want to add an extra one. I wanted to ask this. Um, what was the, I guess, the weirdest or something that you did not expect another hog player to say? What was, like, the most out-of-pocket thing that they said to you? <laughs> player or a fan? I mean, either. Like, just what comes to your head when you hear that? The wildest thing. Mmm. Wildest thing that I can say on camera? <laughs> I got a few in mind, but probably shouldn't say. Um, I had a fan. So this was after an LSU game. I did not play well. I think I made an error and I struck out twice or something like that. Did not play well. And somebody on Twitter DM'd me and called me a Nazi. So, there's that. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty wild. <laughs> I did not expect an answer like that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's for a while. That's wild. Yeah, a little I saw bit. It and I, was like, I was saw it and I was like, wow. <laughs> so, you know, we got, we've got the best fans in the country, but we've got some, got some rough ones, too. A little bit. Um, so, that was, that was a big thing for me. Just one thing we got to remember is that you're a Nazi. That's, that's a great thing yeah, everybody needs to remember. That, <laughs> Dude, when I saw that, I was like, wow. I had to show other people. I was like, you believe it? <laughs> Came out of left field. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, so what other hobbies do you have? Or, like, what other things are you interested in? I mean, I love baseball. Uh, football is probably my favorite sport. Um, I just wasn't physically blessed enough to play it in college. So baseball is uh, – I obviously love baseball. Um, but I love football. Um Again, I don't have favorite teams. I just have favorite players. DK Metcalf is one of my favorite players. Um, let's see, AJ Brown, he's one of my favorite players. Let's see, who else? I like watching Joe Burrow play. Uh, I'm like a huge Chiefs fan, so. Oh my God, man, <laughs> do it. No, uh, uh, no, no, no. Hey, hold up. No, uh uh. I just know way too many of my friends that. Started like in the Chiefs out of nowhere. I'm like, come on, dude. Right when they started getting good, really. That's true. So, whenever somebody's a Chiefs fan, I gotta, I gotta test them, make sure they're a real Chiefs fan. Yeah, I, I've been a fan since Alex Smith, and then it was like when Mahomes came in, I thought we were gonna absolutely suck, but then yeah. we didn't. So, <laughs> uh, another hobby. I, I just got in golf. Not great, you know. I'm still trying to get the baseball swing and out of it, so I can get my golf swing in there. Um. I give lessons here in Little Rock. At, uh, so I do medical device sales for uh, my main job. And then at night, uh, there's a facility here called Proformance in Little Rock. And uh, I give lessons there, infield lessons only, to uh, kids like 7 to 16 years old. So I'll do that. So that would say that's my hobbies. I can't believe it. You like baseball? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so my question was, what was your pregame work like routine like? My pregame routine, I wouldn't say I was. It wasn't really superstitious, but I definitely had like a full thing. Like if, if I got out of my routine, then I just wasn't. You know, I'd get a little frazzled. I like like let's say we had a game at seven. I would get to the field at noon or one, and I would chill. I'd get in the hot tub. I would get on the foam roller and roll out. I'd sit in the training room and, you know, do whatever, like maybe get like a little massage on my legs or something, my arm. I do stuff like that. Just get my body ready. I'd eat, you know, I didn't, I hated being rushed. Like if we had practiced at two o'clock, I'm there at one thirty Cause I just, I hated being rushed. Like I just, I just don't like that. Um, pre-game BP, uh, would always have a snack during BP and after BP. And then pregame, I was a little weird. I was a little weird about this. I always like, I always got really quiet. Like before the game, like once we finish warming up and we go in the dugout and we're waiting for the starting lineups or whatever, I was always on the pitch just sitting there. Like I was not a talkative one. Outside of that, like I'll, I'll be talking. I'll be cool and fun or whatever. Um, but I was always one of those where, like, guys would come up to me and try to talk. I'm like, come on, man, we're about to play. Like, I'm, I'm trying to lock in. Like, I don't want to talk right now. So I was always one of those guys that was super quiet before a game. The last question. We asked a little bit more than 12, but that's fine. Oh, <laughs> good. Um, so I know I asked you who inspired you, 
like at a higher level, like a famous person. But who, who inspired you, like at a family level or a friend level? Uh, it was definitely my dad. Um, he was never like he played baseball in high school, um, but I would say he didn't necessarily. He's from a small town in Tennessee. Um, he didn't have the level of training or opportunities that I did growing up. Um, so like, he's definitely an athlete, but I guess that explains why he didn't play in college or anything. Um, but he was always there. Uh, you know, I can remember thousands of times, like on a Sunday or Saturday when I was younger, we'd go out and take around balls or hit BP or whatever, you know, he was, you know, in his older age, you know, he's throwing me BP and his shoulders about to fall off. Right. He says it to this day that his shoulders just hang on by a string right now from all that BP. Um, so definitely that, and he's always pushed me, but he never pushed me to the point where he would burn me out. Like he always motivated me and stuff like that. And, you know, it's easy in the moment when you're a 14, 13, 15 year old kid, uh, to get, you know, mad or whatever, get tired and be like, man, why are we doing this? Like, it's too much. Uh, but looking back, it's definitely what made me what I am now, uh, work ethic wise, skill wise, all that. Um, so he did a really good job with that. Um, and not many people know this, but I was going to hang it up after high school. Um, I was supposed to go to a specific school, um, Ole Miss, actually, and as a walk-on. And Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was supposed to go there as a walk-on. And that's really the only place I wanted to go to because my whole family are Ole Miss people. Uh, my grandfather played there. Hey, let me explain myself. Uh, <laughs> my grandfather played there. He played football and baseball there. And both my parents went there, all my siblings went there, and I grew up an hour away. So it was only natural. And Eli Manning, um, you know, your favorite Eli Manning played there. Yeah, Eli Manning played there. Um, so that's where I wanted to go. And I got the call <laughs> late summer before my freshman year that I wasn't going to be able to have a spot because X, this guy and this guy and this guy are supposed to take the draft, and they didn't. So they're coming back, and they're like, man, we just don't have a spot for you. And, you know, I was pretty, obviously pretty bummed about it. And I was like, man, I'll just, I'll just go to school at Ole Miss and hang it up. And I remember my dad being like, are you sure? <laughs> it's a big decision. And I was so mad that I was like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm sure. And then a couple of days later, I was, I snapped back into it. I was like, man, no, I'm not, I'm not done playing. Like, there's no way. So that's why I went to a junior college. But he's definitely been the biggest influence uh, for my baseball career. And my older brother, my older brother's five years older than me. He was a big baseball guy growing up, so obviously I watched him and all that. We were kind of different players. Uh, he was he was more of like a center field kind of stocky guy, super fast, hit home runs. And I'm the infield guy who's quick and kind of plays a little more small ball. Um, but he broke his elbow his junior year of high school. So that kind of messed up his recruiting a little bit. Um, so he ended up not playing college baseball. Um, but those two definitely influenced my baseball career a lot. Well, thank you so much for doing this, especially after you ran that camp you had to run. That's, <laughs> it's all good, man. This has been an amazing opportunity. And sorry about the whole technical issues at the beginning. It's all good. But, like, this... I've, 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 got a, I've got a question for y'all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to flip the table a little bit. Oh, shoot. <laughs> all right. All right, I need y'all's favorite hog moment from any sport that you can remember. Yeah, I know. If you need me to narrow it down to a sport, we can do that. But if you got a favorite hog moment. All right, so. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. I mean, Man, I, you got beat, beat in Texas at home in football. I, yeah. Stop. No. I, I had season tickets that year. I had season tickets that year, but I went on a cruise and I missed that one game. The you know, one the, game. The thing, the what thing a game about, to miss. The thing about that game was, like, it was good at the moment, but then Texas ended up sucking that year, so it kind of, like, ruined that. Kinda, yeah, it kind of ruined it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's beating a rival. Um, I mean, beating Ole Miss is always good. Um, take that. No, okay. Um, um, don't worry. I'm, I'm on the good side now. <laughs> um, mine, my, my um, favorite moment is probably whenever we beat Auburn in basketball, because I – I was, uh, they were number one at the time, and I was watching it on TV with my dad, and I just remember um, when we were watching it, his reaction, 
he was just like, yeah, and I'd never seen him that happy over Hollick Sports, because normally he's like the negative one, you know, the one on Twitter and stuff, but, <laughs> but I don't think he'd said those words, but, you know, anyways, <laughs> it was like, you know, he's normally not that, he's normally not like that happy over those kind of moments, but it was like, you know, Devo did the dunk afterwards, and you could just tell yeah. it was just, it was just an amazing moment, and I wasn't even there, and Hayden was. I wasn't even there, and it was still an amazing moment. Yeah, yeah that, that was a good moment. Uh, definitely being Auburn in basketball was that was good. Oh, no. I want to say fourth and twenty five, but I didn't see it until like twenty sixteen. Um, another one, even though I, I was didn't. At that, I was at that game. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yep. I. Don't ask me that. <laughs> oh, <I can. laughs> um. I was thinking of the Stillwater Regional a couple years ago. Yeah, that was a good one. That was pretty cool. I mean, I was watching that as an unbiased fan. I was like, this is the craziest regional I've ever seen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, most stressful. Um, Honestly, my favorite moment as a hog, I started watching baseball like 2017. Um, It was in the 2017 year where obviously that happened. It was probably when we went... I, I, when I started watching, we went to Omaha and obviously destroying South Carolina. I think that was just probably and and, and uh, the, the following year where we destroyed Ole Miss to go to, to Omaha during yeah. the Hess and Kerstead years. Man, I I mm-hmm. loved what Hess and Kerstead was probably the most fun uh, player to watch yeah. as a whole. Yeah, he was. And he was oh, he was so good at what he does. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, probably that. That whole year? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, are, I mean, those are solid ones. Can't argue that. Yeah. Like, I remember the, the Ole Miss game. It was game th- the game three game where he, like, just absolutely destroyed, like, a home run and, like, basically isolated the game. I was at yeah. all three of those, and then when game two sucked. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Guess you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away